You're friends with Jerry Azuma. What do you remember about the first time you met? I remember his style was really crazy and I just said, hey man, we really gotta, we really gotta fix this. <laughs> Tell me about your first jobs. The majority of my first jobs were retail. So when I was in undergrad, I worked at The Gap. When I was in graduate school, I worked at Diesel and Dolce & Gabbana. And which job do you think about the fondest? I think it was my time at Diesel. I was in there shopping and they happened to be having a fashion show in Chicago. And the store manager asked me to be in the fashion show. <laughs> And then after that, I hit him up for a gig and the rest is history. There was like a specific way we had to fold the jeans, not necessarily having the top and the bottom of the jeans kind of facing the world. It was really kind of like the thigh that had the most like wash and texture and like emotion. We were selling jeans for two or 300 bucks, which was kind of unheard of at that time. And there was so much about just providing something that didn't exist. My dad came in and looked at a pair of jeans and said, well, what do they do? I'm like, they don't do anything. They just look fresh. <laughs> Having the conviction that there are people that are looking for that, you know, and it may sound crazy, but if you believe in it, I believe you can see it through. What did retail teach you about running a brand? It really gave me insight as to not only what people want and what they're looking for, but how they want to feel. I'm focusing on that emotion. Simultaneously, I'm trying to solve the solution to their closet, but I'm also trying to give them this emotion of a Christmas present with what it is that they're buying. Rumor has it there was a shift where you sold over 5K in merchandise. It's pretty true. My first day when they took me from being in the stock room to sales, I sold more than anyone on the floor. And that was just an understanding of what people wanted, but also with an understanding of what we had in stock to solve that problem. You know, working the stock room was so informative, both gratifying and very humbling. Do you remember getting your first paycheck? Yeah, I went right back to the store and bought diesel jeans with my paycheck. You also worked in baseball for a bit, right? When I graduated from graduate school, I got a, my first corporate job with the Los Angeles Dodgers and to me, my favorite pastime is a day baseball game with a root beer and a hot dog. My dad was in baseball and he was a coach and a player, but to be able to do something similar was pretty amazing. Did you learn anything from watching your father when you were growing up? Following in my father's footsteps didn't look exactly like following in his footsteps. Everything that I watched, you know, from the way he treated his teammates, the way he talked to the media. And there's so many things that I just was a sponge that I just learned from watching my dad that I use today. What did you wear on your first day on the job? I don't remember what I wore on my first day to work, but I do remember hating to wear khakis and polos. And I think that might've been one of the reasons that I'm in fashion now. Can you tell me about styling your first client? The first client that I had through styling was Matt Kemp. At the time, he just signed a really big deal with the LA Dodgers. And I was really happy with the outfit that we put him in. I think it was a Tom Ford suit. It was a pretty fresh look for him. It was a bow tie and it might've been like a plaid suit. What, it, what, what sounds loud right now, but we did it in a very like quiet way, which was very sophisticated. You were also a party promoter at one point. How did you dress for your parties? I mean, you're talking about 2007, 2008. So I probably had on like a pair of Rick Owens, baggy pair of sweats. I think we still play around similar silhouettes. I think what we do with Fear of God is really informed a lot by athletics and sport and trying to find the sophistication and elegance that's like effortless and relaxed. What advice would you give to your younger self? To stay the course. Everything that you have in front of you may not feel as if it's leading you to your dreams or to your purpose, but understanding that even in our most reckless times, he is still ordering our steps. That's where my conviction comes in around fear of God and our ability to continue to kind of pave our way in this space. <laughs>